Hello, welcome back. It's been a year. <laughs> Hello, Carol. Hi, Stuart. Welcome back. Oh, it's it's zipped by, but welcome back, you viewers. If you don't know the show, let me tell you all about it. It's all gathered up. It's the show that runs parallel to the Great British Sewing Bee, uh, where we pick up perhaps techniques that have come up on the show and then we like to go into detail here with them in way more detail because we've got the time and we can also do it in detail because we have every week carol elaine master taylor couturier telling us what to do hey carol good to see you again it's lovely to be back thanks to and and look at you looking all summery. You're, you, the sun's been out this week at long last, hey? This is why it's about time. It's been a long winter, hasn't it? And we oh. really long for the warm temperatures and thank goodness they're here. Oh, so long, but excited to be back with some new technology. If you're new to the program, then you'll just know what it is. But we've been doing this for, oh, I think about three or four years now. Uh, I'll do a, a three years, is it? Yes. I think yeah. so. Or is this our third year? Well, a, a very brief story about how we know each other. Carol wrote me uh, uh, an email. I run a shop. I run a little bricks and mortar shop, a yarn and fabric haberdashery shop uh, in Suffolk, Long Melford, Suffolk. And Carol wrote me an email and it came up and I thought, no, this is too nice an email. This is this is junk. <laughs> so I ignored it. But then I did some looking and I went, oh, no, she's real. This is a real person in London. And I wrote back. And do you know what? I'm glad I did because a two year friendship has developed since. And so much learning over those two years, haven't we, Carol? Well, absolutely for me too. learn from the listeners, you know, I'm learning from the program, what, you know, with the new techniques and the new fabrics. And it's just, it is a craft that just keeps evolving. And if you can, in a, in a minute or so, can you give our new viewers, and you know what, I think our old viewers love it anyway, a, a, a summary of Carol Elaine Couturier, if you can, your skills. Well, grandmother taught me to sew when I was five. And I got into a lot of trouble through the years. Um, I was encouraged to go to college and get a regular degree. And I did. And I went into banking. But I kept sewing all along. And I had a little business when I was 14. And I started to sew pantsuits for women who entered the workforce. Now, pantsuit was a revolutionary garment because the women were wearing trousers. Okay, oh. And I loved because it was that really wonderful um, phase of feminism, you know, when Billie Jean King um, beat Bobby Riggs in tennis, uh. you know. And, and the, the, you know, the, the women were our real heroes. Anyway, I'm, long story made shorter, I moved to London. I started a company called The Concert Store because there's so many musicians and ensembles in London. And, and then from working with rank and file musicians, then I moved into the solo market. I got hired immediately on Savile Row. As soon as I walked in, they said, you know your onions. And then I just went to work for many fashion houses. And then before COVID, I set up independently. And here we are. Oh, now, uh, I know we've been talking about coronation. Were you doing stuff for the coronation? Can you talk about it at all? <laughs> I, I, there were several ambassadorial dinners. And so I was making gowns for the white tie oh. dinners and, and also doing, uh, I was on hand for, to help with some of the tailoring as well. Now, and um, yeah. I also, uh, I think I've spoke to you about this. Uh, if not, I'm, I, uh, it's a surprise. You've talked about hand and, is it hand and lock? You've done some, hand did you? Yes, hand and lock is a specialist embroiderer. Um, it has the royal warrant. And it does everything from oh. um, West End shows to Hollywood movies to, you know, simpler things like doing monogramming for, you know, shirts and, and, and hand tailored things. And they run a global competition every year. And they have categories of, of, of design and um, textile art and fashion. Oh. And I mentor the candidates. And that is, that's a terrific thing to look into. 
Um, you don't have to enter the competition, but you can go on the site and you can see the classes that they offer. Any, anything from timbre beading to gold work to uh, silk shading. So, and then you can go and buy buy uh, embroidery haberdashery oh, there wow. as well. Tour of the place. It's not to be missed. Oh, and not. I bet you love doing that, the mentoring. I do, yes, yeah. very much. And and I think that's why we get on so well. The the ex-teacher and me, for those of you who don't know, I used to teach in the creative arts for secondary school and A-level for 16 years. And I've since left to have my own fabric and yarn shop. And I'm still learning and I'm teaching now. I'm And Carol's teaching me or I'm learning through Carol. And it's just, it, it, and it's just something I'm really passionate about. And that's how this show came about because we knew, we, we love the sewing bee, don't we? We know it's entertainment. And over the years that the sewing bee has developed, it's kind of lost that educational point of view. When it first started, it was, it was perhaps more educational than entertainment. And I know it's primetime telly now. It's on BBC One. It used to be on BBC Two. So the entertainment value has come through even more. And then we thought there was something missing and we created this show. So as we go through this show, Carol gives us demonstrations. Now, when we first did it, we would have pre-recorded and then edited it in live and Carol would have dropped me in her tutorials. And it was a huge amount of work. Well, we've since adapted and we've got to the point now where we're like professionals and we're doing it live. So yes, we're recording, but we're recording live. We're not stopping. We've got the technology all linked up. We will go soon to Carol's cam and we're gonna see her live sewing and doing a demonstration. And as you saw there, we are looking at today French seams and elastic because those two things came up during the show and Carol said, yes, we can focus it on that. So we're going to focus it on those two topics for around about half an hour, may even be 15 minutes or so, who knows? And then we'll have a quick chat at the end about the programme and what we saw. As the weeks go on, the topics change and it really does depend on what comes up on on the episode and it might be one topic it mean it might be lots of little tips it depends on what comes up but when you saw this episode carol you thought yep yeah, it's got to be french seams didn't you i did yes and and it always happens when when you're rushing um that's when mistakes are made but if you just understand what it is you're doing you're sewing a french seam is done in two steps you sew it twice first from the right side and then from the wrong side so you first you saw it from the right side of that you're looking at the right side of the fabric, oh, which already so, is yeah, alien, isn't it? it? It is alien. Yes, we talk a lot about sewing being a game of opposites, and if you can understand the negative of something, you, you you've got a good head start. But the French seam, as I said, it's stitched twice. First, you put the wrong sides of the fabric together, so you're looking at the right sides yeah. of the fabric. Yeah. The wrong sides are on the inside. You sew a very small seam, um, as small as you can control, right. or you sew like a quarter of an inch and then you trim it to about an eighth of an inch. You press that little seam open, then you flip the fabric round so you have the right sides together. And then you stitch your second seam, encasing the first seam. Okay, so it's See, that simple. <laughs> when um, you say it like but, that, it sounds simple, but it's... I can see how easy it is to get get muddled. Uh, if I may, when they started talking about the whiskers and wispy bits, yes. what was going on there, if you can? Okay, I'm going to show you that. <gasps> I'll show you how that works, okay? So Brilliant. we'll see a live happening of those whiskers, okay? Um, <laughs> do you want to do that now or do you want to do that later? When, how, how do you want to work? I this? think we should just go straight into it because that's what this programme is about. It's about going into the detail of the technique. So let's, you okay. head over to your sewing machine um, uh, okay. or however you want to do it and, and we'll see if, if it works. Go for it. <laughs> okay. okay, so let's get a light down here. Okay. Can see, everybody see this. me? We can, yeah. and you, you, we can hear you. Uh, even though you're a distance away, we can still hear you, but I'm sure the audience will be happy with that. Okay. So, you know, I was playing in an orchestra one time, and the conductor said, play like a bunch of thugs. You know, play it wrong. Play it, just re be reckless. 
just just do whatever happens. And it taught me this idea that what happens when you do something wrong, okay? So okay. this is our fabric. We're going to sew a French seam. Now let's just pretend that I've got the wrong sides together. Let's see if I have a pencil here. So this is the right side of the fabric, and this is wrong, and this is wrong. Okay, okay? Carol, can, can you do me a yeah. favor? Sure. I, I'm... I'm I, for some reason, I get my R's and my W's right and wrong. I get confused. Can you put on the, with the right, can you put pretty? So, because pretty sides to me, I know that's the, the pretty side of the fabric. <laughs> and I think that might help, but I think it might help a lot of viewers as well. So we're looking at the pretty side, which is already in my head as a patchworker, a bit odd. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Okay. So here we go. Now, we're under pressure. A lot, a lot of people are watching us. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's the first pass. That's the, the first thing. Then what they tell you to do is you, you open that up. You give it a quick hand press. Everybody see that? Okay. Yes, now you, it's hard to do on silks or a, um, a wispier fabric or a georgette. I got calico, which works right. So now we've got, there's your pretty side, Stuart. Yep. Okay. Now we're going those both together. Okay. Now this is our second pass. Okay. Oh, people are watching. Oh dear. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this... You've got, you've got uh, people going, you've only got five minutes left. <laughs> oh, that's right. Five minutes. Hurry up. Open it up. Press it. Oops. Oh <gasps> no. See what happened. Here's our hairy bits. Here's the oh. wispy bits. And, and we can even see in here. Oh, we've not even caught the seam in. Oh. If you were to take this fabric and just rock it over a little bit more so that you cover up all those wispy bits, right? Yeah. And give it a little press and open it up, then you can see really we should have been sewing on the other on the outside of that seam. We should have been sewing here. Oh, right? get you. Yeah. So the other thing you can do is if if you only have a couple of hairy bits showing. You can go in with a pair of tweezers and All right. just pull. You'd oh, we just just move your left hand if you can. Move your left hand okay. down a bit. That's it. There you go. Ah. Sometimes you go in and just get these wispy bits and, oh, and pull them out. If you've only oh. got a couple, see, there say. it is. We've pulled that out. Um, but that's uh, the idea behind doing this is. You sew your first seam, but then your second seam has to completely cover that. And if you get it wrong, that's what happens. Oh. And that's what, that's what did happen to a couple of the contestants. And they were, you know, they were brought up on that. Yeah. But um, the idea, to, you know, to, uh, to fix that, you just have to make sure that your second seam... So you're just going back down further away now, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, I'm just going further away just to show you that now we don't have any hairy bits. Okay. Oh. Um, the other thing about a French seam is it is at its prettiest and its most effective if it's a quarter of an inch wide or less. So that's just something to remember. So your first seam, you could sew it at an eighth of an inch and then encase it in a quarter of an inch. So let's pretend this is only one line of stitching and this one is gone. We don't have this one. That would be too big for a French yeah. seam. Okay, you want to keep it to about a quarter of an inch. So that's what I have to say about a French seam, Stuart. Oh, brilliant. Can, can you do, I know this, have you got some scissors there? Can you cut that edge off? Can you do it again? Sure. Do it again uh, as, as if, um, uh, as, as you said, from the, the one eighth, that's it. And then I, I just like reinforcement. <laughs> Let's put her on the spot and tell her to do it again. So uh, right from the beginning with drawing, pr uh, writing on the fabric, because that's a good technique, isn't it? To write on mark. So pretty side, or right side, okay. but pretty side sounds much nicer. So there we go. Unpretty side. So you're so now, now going to do... I'm... Yeah, so now I'm going to sew just an eighth of an inch seam. Okay, so I've picked just, I, I've picked one of the elements of the machine. You know, you, 
uh, down here, you know, I think I'm, I'm using this as my guide here. Get you. There. Then you, you can also use the edge of your presser foot, which is just shy of the quarter inch mark. Um, I've got the old math on this machine, inches. Um, if you have centimeters, um, then you have different markings. Okay. Right, so we're watching that. So there's your eighth, and you're now opening up. So you can see the pretty uh, side facing you, and you're that's right. opening up. So I'm opening it up with this process. Okay, now I'm going to hand press it. Or you can take it over to the iron if you've got a fabric which is a little bit trickier or a more delicate. I have to okay. say, I'm a big fan of the finger press. Yes, me too. Now, at this stage, can you see that we've got a little bit of hairy things straight just yeah, coming out? Yeah. Now, you can trim them at this stage if you think they're going to be a, a problem, okay? Um, that's one thing that you can do ahead of time. So you now, fold it over. So you're basically seeing, like, pardon the expression, your butt cheeks facing you when you fold that over, aren't you? <laughs> you, you could, yes, that's right. Press it open, butt cheeks facing you. Now you're <laughs> now you're folding. So, up. Good job. Now you're folding it on the seam line. Okay. Yeah. Fold it right on the seam line. Um, you can sometimes, if, if it's like I said, if the fabric is a little bit testy, you can. You can reach in with a pin to make sure that you can see these stitches, okay? Yeah. Now we have right sides together, the pretty side, yeah. right sides together, and now we're going to sew our quarter of an inch. So I'm nice. using up all my bobbin threads, so that's why I have all unmatching colors, <laughs> okay? It's so brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Pass. And then you're going okay. to open that. And then, and it's good. then we're going to open that. And oh. there. Okay. No hairy bits. And a yeah. very pretty quarter of an inch French seam. And then you oh. can take that over and press it whichever way you want. And there you are. And the idea is it's as nice looking on the outside as it is on the inside. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So... Seam. Carol, see, <laughs> you just made it look effortless. And um, I suppose mm. when you look at it, it actually is, and I don't want to demean it, it, it seems to, because I'm a patchworker, I'm used to quarter of inch seams and opening them. Yeah. Once you've got your head round, you know, that, that whole pretty side and wrong side, it's still a, quite an easy seam to do, isn't it, really? It is. It's, it's straightforward. You know, you're sewing one seam at an eighth, taking your time. If you if you think of the steps ahead, yeah. one seam, press it open, flip it around, yeah. sew another seam. Yeah. So, so, so when we think about the the sewers, and we every year we marvel at the sewers who they, they these yeah. twelve sewers they put themselves up for telly for being yeah. uh, analyzed and talked about and everything it's it's phenomenal we fully respect that um but actually as a sewer for episode one doing a french seam in a garment that's I, perhaps an expected thing to be able to do would you say i think it's certainly in the syllabus of things you should you should okay. know how to do if you're if you're going to enter a competition like this now um, what about the idea of the french seam in the sleeve does that make it even more difficult or would it still just be actually okay yeah that's a very good point because a straight french seam is is very straightforward sewing around a curve and sewing mm. a seam that you have a sleeve which has e a little bit of ease in it in, a, in an armhole that doesn't. So a sleeve, and it just so happened. I mean, this is the funniest thing, because today I was working with the new startup, and she said, I don't want any overlocking in my collection at all. Oh. And she's got, a, she's got a top with butterfly sleeve in it, a double layer butterfly sleeve. I'm just <gasps> going to bring it in to focus. No way. So, that, no way. This actually happened today. Now, let's see. How can I do this? Okay, so this is half of a toile, right? Yeah. So 
we've got our bodice front here and our bodice back. Yeah. This is like, okay. There's our back, and uh, let me bring it round again and show you the sleeve. Okay. Yeah. So we have a two-tiered um, circular sleeve. Okay. <gasps> there's the shorter sleeve, and there's this uh, the larger. Oh, that's exquisite. Undersleeve. Isn't that beautiful? Now she said, no overlocking. I want this in a French seam. Okay. So. I allowed one and a half centimeters to make this French seam, okay? Sometimes they expect you to do it in a centimeter. That's a bit risky. A centimeter and a half is, is better. So what I did, I set the sleeve in. Now, I'm wondering if you can all see this and see how nice that looks. I can zoom in a bit as well. I see it. Okay. I'll move it the other way towards uh, you. This that's it. it, yeah. And then twist it the other back to. Oh, look at that, everybody! You see that? Okay. So there is there is our seam. You can see the outs. You can see the inside edge here, and then the other side. Oh. Okay, and it really is beautiful because it's it's the sleeve flutters, and when it. When you know when you're moving or the wind takes flight, yeah, you can see you can see inside you, the underarm is exposed. Yes, you know, completely. You see, the, you see the underarm is exposed, so it's a really good um, insistence that she wants. Um, the, and this is just a twelve, so this was just to see: can I do that? Yeah. Can I put in a two-tiered sleeve in an armhole? And this is a lightweight calico. She's going to use a silk. So I know the silk is going to be just as lightweight. Yeah. But if you're working at this level, you really want the finest finish you can get. So it's a lovely yeah. coincidence, isn't it? That I Absolutely. just haven't worked Meant to today. be. And as you so rightly say, when you're working on something uh, and you're, you're having a, a couturier with their hands crafting this, yes, you can completely understand no overlocker. Yes, completely absolutely. respect that. Yes, because you're going to zero in on that overlocking, and yes. especially with a sleeve like that. If any of the garment is exposed and it's overlocked, well, it doesn't look very nice. Yeah. Not when you know that with just a little bit more time, yeah. you, you can make a really expert uh, couture finish on it, which is so pleasant to look, like, look at, whether it's inside or outside the garment. And... I know uh, putting sleeves in is hard work anyway. So dear Catherine, <laughs> who put the sleeve oh. in upside down, I, I have done that many times. I've put sleeves in upside down. I've put plackets, as you know, Carol, on my shirt <laughs> <laughs> upside down. Uh, it's yes. Um, and as you rightly say, when you've got cameras on you, you know you've got a time limit. Uh, it's hard. So full respect to them. But we had some <laughs> lovely French seams there, didn't we? You have just did, made yes. it so much clearer, Carol. I think a couple of years ago, French seams came up and you did another demo. I'll put the link in the description to Carol's website uh, on YouTube, her, her YouTube channel, where you can see that uh, link. Um, it will be in our show. So you can see the same shows on Carol's web, uh, Carol's YouTube channel and here on the Woolpatch uh, channel. But there we are. So that's French and seams. Sorry, I, I just say... This this goes a long way to convincing you to, to make a sample, make samples yeah. if you have if you have the time to do something, uh, get a piece of scrap fabric and just try it out and try to do it wrong. Just rush, yeah. rush yourself through it, and see what happens. You you will discover what goes wrong uh, that that way. Well, we know that we as, as as teacher myself, it is the only way you learn. You want to make those mistakes because that, making that mistake then triggers oh that's how you do it and you then tend to always do it right because you know that's I, I don't want to sound patronizing at all but it is we as adults we put so much pressure on ourselves to get it right the first time don't we oh we do and I think someone said it was I think it was Jilly she said I just feel I let myself down but I feel like I left every let everyone else down it's like what a what pressure yeah, yeah. to feel and all this apology for you know, uh, for uh, what it's absolutely uh, yes nothing nothing but in awe from us and i know we look at it and we still criticize or we analyze and we try to work out but 
I, we all know how much uh, they don't need any apology for what they do for going on there because <laughs> I couldn't do it. It's um, hard work. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, oh, that was, um, what was that? I'm just looking at my notes. That was um, three hours to make uh, that twist top with the French seams in. It's, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, something else that you thought uh, would be good to look at was elastic that popped up in the show. The reason I wanted to look at that was because there were, I think there were a couple of contestants who were feeding the elastic through. Again, that's one of the final things to do. Everything else is done. You just put the elastic in. Yeah. And that threaded thing that <laughs> happens where you lose the elastic, you know, or it breaks off a safety pin or you sew it and then it escapes your, your, your tack. Yeah. Um, and it's heartbreaking because you have to kind of start over. You've got to find the, or sometimes you just say, oh, the heck with it. I'll just feed in a whole new line of elastic and there'll be two in there. But it, at least it gets you yeah. to finish the project, right? If you're in a hurry. Um, and I felt so sorry for them at that stage because they're thinking, I'm on the home stretch. This is, I've got it, it's nearly done. And then you get that, you know, five minutes sewers and and then that happens. <laughs> yeah. And it's horrible. Oh. It's horrible. So I thought I would show you a few yeah. tricks to avoid that. Absolutely. So we'll take our French seam away. Now, I've got a casing here, and we all know the drill. You take um, you take So is that what's that? Your elastic and you've got your have you got a safety pin on your elastic there, have you? Yeah. Did I not show that? Okay. Yes. Oh, no, no, that I was just a... just me being fussy, that's all. <laughs> oh, right. Make sure that you put your pin in far enough in. If you put it too close to the edge, you have that danger of it unraveling, and you'll it'll fall off the pin, and you'll lose it. So, okay, we're going to start now. Okay. Our elastic. Okay, now we got it. We're going yeah, to... Yeah, so this is where you, you push and pull, and you push and pull, aren't you? So you move the pin along. Yeah. You move the pin along, and then you pull the fabric back, okay? Find the safety pin again. Feel that safety pin. Move it along between your fingers, okay? So that safety pin, you can feel it moving between these two fingers, okay? And you, so, you keep backing up your hand, okay? And then moving the fabric along. Now you're doing this, and everything is going fine, and it's all going well. And you get to the end, and now you want to tie up, and where did it go? <laughs> it's stuck. It, it's, yeah. You've lost it. Okay? This is so common. Okay. So let's, So then you take it out, and you start yeah. over, right? Yeah. So, Story of my life. <laughs> Story. It's happened to me so many times. Um, so we're going to start it again. Sometimes it's a little tricky at the start. Okay. Now... So we're moving that pin along. Now, we know that we're going to fill this casing with a shorter piece of elastic so it will ruche it up. Yeah? yeah? Don't want to lose it this time. That was horrible experience. So take your elastic, find the end, go just under your work, and pin that end Ugh. securely so you can't lose it. Okay? Now we'll go back. We're a simple this step. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're feeding it through. Here we go. And now you can pull it back with confidence because. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you see? It's, there's no way you're going to lose that. Yeah. So now it's the end. Now, a lot of times they, um, they will give you a measurement for your elastic. Okay? I always cut a longer piece than they've asked you to. Oh. And what you can do is you can say, well, the measuring guide tells me that I need this much elastic, okay? I'm gonna cut that, I'm gonna cut that extra just so I have something more to work with. Absolutely okay? brilliant. Okay, so now you get to the end and let's just pin that in place. You can pin it a couple of times just to make sure you don't lose it. Now we go back to this end, and again, I would, 
I would cut this much extra that the pattern told me to, and I'll just cut it off at the end when I don't need it. Okay. Brilliant. So now we're going to, we're going to secure this. I'm going to secure it this way and I'll tell you why, because now it's our elastic and we've got a really pretty set of gathers now. And we've got a little bit extra on both sides. Okay. So we're not in danger of it slipping out. Mm. Now when you stack it, let's go back to our mark, which is here. Okay. Now let's say you have to sew a seam, let maybe three eighths of an inch or tack. Don't just tack once, go back and forth two or three times more if you have to, but really secure that. Okay. And then at that point, you can leave this or you can trim it back. But leave something. Oh, okay. Leave just in case, all right? So that's how you tack and secure that in. It's not going to go anywhere, and you've got three or four passes, so you know that that's going to be, that's going to be sturdy. It's not going to fall out of the casing. And again, it just takes that little bit of extra time, but you know that it's going to, you know, it's going to perform because elastic puts stress on the garment um but there you go that's just another little a little tip secure your elastic at the edge of your casing so you don't lose it and when you tack it tack it securely back and forth back and forward yeah brilliant yes. absolutely brilliant and that's something mm. we said right from the beginning um that uh yeah what we try to do for all gathered up it's not about learning uh, heavy skills each week, which, you know, take a long time. Sometimes they could just be simple tips that you only know from experience of years of couturier. So you're passing those tips down to us, Carol. Yeah. So that's great. That's right. And it doesn't take any extra time. But, you know, I know a lot of people who say, oh, well, I've, I've tried to sew and and. I got the machine out and the thread knotted up and I thought, well, that's enough of that. I can't, I obviously, you know, can't, I can't sit for too long. The machine knotted up. I had an accident. I pick, I drew blood. I picked a finger, you know, just yeah. stay with it because, yeah. you know, everybody makes, everybody has made these same exact mistakes. Yeah. And I think we've talked about this before as well. When, when you just, just have a go and and perhaps practice first or or have a play first and 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 let the the doing of it just be part of the whole thing and 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 enjoy that just being there that creating feel if that makes any sense at all totally you know it makes sense and i think the real joy of it is watching something grow watching yeah. something being built you know, that it's so satisfying to do that, but you have to stay with it and you have to, you know, trust that if you get into a jam or run into a hurdle along the way, that's all part of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's all part of watching something grow and get built. Uh, yeah. And develop and, and then that experience in turn, hopefully impacts when you do it again and again and again. And, and then you, you learn, I suppose, as you do, you learn, uh, these tips as you go along because they're not shortcuts sometimes they're just different methods that make the end result better and sometimes it might be a bit longer but it still means probably you're going to get a better result too that's right and some of these tips are essential because they take the risk out of the job and yeah. that's what you want you just want to think ahead you want to prepare things and you want to put some things into practice so that you do not risk making yep. a mistake. And and I that's one thing I've learned from you, definitely, is this idea of doing a little practice. So when I do my shirts, 
I now am a placket master because I just got a tiny little bit of scrap fabric and just practiced that idea of the pretty side and the wrong side and the cutting and the folding the placket through and just doing it on a, I think I did that two or three times so my head could get round the methodology of what I was actually doing. Right. And then when I went and enjoyed that for a couple of evenings and then when I went to my mm. actual shirt, I I could do it. And, but I only learned that the hard way because... I did it first of all on, a, on on my actual fabric and I put the placket on the same side, both arms. So I learned it the hard way, but now it just makes so much sense. Just one night in my sewing room, let's just do some plackets on some scrap fabric. Yes, sometimes I will, if I know something is going to fit, I've got a front and a back and a sleeve say, and I know everything is going to fit. I've cut it or recut it after fittings. Then I like to spend the evening, just making the facings, mm. putting on the interfacing, um, oiling the machine, getting the scissors in, in, in a row, you know, the yeah. proper tools that I'm going to need the next day, um, getting all the pieces together and just looking at the job from that, you know, from that point yeah. of view. I, I don't, I'd expect, not expecting to build anything, but I'm just getting everything ready. Uh, that's a wonderful thing to be able to do when you're not in a rush. And then you come into the studio the next day or a few hours later and everything's ready for you. And it sort of greets you <laughs> and it's exciting. It's, yeah. it's, you know, will it to happen? So um, yeah. do make sound, do practice and, and, and practice something just for the heck of it. Even if it has nothing to do with Absolutely. your project. We don't, well, that's a very yeah. good point. We don't always have to be working on a real project. I could just, you know what? No. I'm just going to do some plackets today or I'm just going to do some patch pockets and practice my, you know, going down, that make that little triangle down, bottom up, and then that little triangle again. Oh, things like That's that. That's it. Get out your favourite sewing book and just open it to any page and yep. try something. And oh, well, we know the sewing book. Have you got your Bible sewing book there? I, it, it, it's propping up my, um, it's propping up <laughs> my iPhone. This oh, <laughs> We, we harp on about this. We're not getting any money out of this. If you want a really good sewing book, find that from your local bookstore. Or if, if you can't, there's no local there bookstore, is, go to Amazon. There is, but, no, there is no better yeah. book on the market than this book here. There's yeah. a lot of books out there, a lot of new ones. They're, they're, they fill the stores every year. Ignore them if you can. <laughs> Get this one. It's all there you, you need. And then obviously yeah. you just need us on YouTube. <laughs> right. So let's have a quick flick through what the sew has actually made. Um, look at this, Carol. Hopefully this works uh, with the wonders of technology. Uh, oh, does it work? No, typical. I can press a button and we can see uh, the, um, the, 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 uh, the sewers. Look. <laughs> oh, look at that. So hopefully we'll learn their names and we'll learn who they are quite quickly. Um, so, <laughs> right. So let's go into chatting about the rounds and a quick uh, flick through some of the ones. Let's start with the, uh, the what we were just talking about earlier, the French seams. Let's talk about the pattern challenge. There they all are. We can see them in front of us. The challenge to make a twist top. I... I would have immediately got my lefts and rights wrong with uh, uh, left over right or right over left. That would have, I would have boo-booed at that. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's a lot harder than it looks because is it right over left while you're looking at the garment or is it right over left or left over right in this case when you're wearing it? And so when Esme said, you see the left has to go over the, the right, and she was point. We were looking at the garment, yeah. and she touched, you know, our right side of the garment as we were looking at it. So it's that can be confusing. But I, hopefully, the pictures were the illustrations in their directions, okay. you know, showed that. So, um, but still, a few got that wrong, didn't they? They did, yes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, looking at the construction. It, they all looked great. What would you say with regard to the twist top and fabric choices? I know some of them went for cotton. Some of them went for more uh, a lighter uh, fabric. 
I like the fabrics that were a bit stretchy. I really like the glittery fabric. Um, I think a lighter fabric is probably a lighter in weight fabric is probably going to behave better. Um, so Asma's was choice was very silky. That was beautifully done. Um, oh, yes, it was very theatrical though. That kind of I I was ho I was hoping that she would do get a different placement on on the other you know not not quite so symmetrical but it, it was beautifully done um, um and again the lighter fabric really uh gave it that delicacy there we go yeah yes that was just superb i suppose the lighter fabric is going to it's going to look better on the the twist isn't it it's it's, it's all going that's to right to drape in better and, and then that bottom bit is going to hang better than 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 a cotton definitely yes definitely because it allows all that fullness to just distribute evenly and lightly with where cotton is a bit perkier it tends to it, it just tends to sculpture d differently this fabric is very fluid so um it's responded beautifully and Indeed. then the sleeve is like a butterfly sleeve isn't it it's got a lot of fullness to it so yeah. um uh, and again if you're doing cotton it's just going to kind of stick out uh, it's not going to fall in those trumpets no it would be sort of more outwards I won't it um yes. and i know you talked about um the glittery one and that was an interesting one i'll find that one here uh that was uh math i think that was matthew uh where is it yeah. um there yeah matthew yeah. Um, it seems um, it looked beautiful, but is that yeah. there's uh, obviously a denser fabric because you can see yes. the way it's twisting there and being heavy. Would you say that? Yeah, it's a bit. It is a bit heavier, um, but still, I, I I think that was a, a very successful um, cho choice of fabric. But it does. You have highlighted the difference in uh, choosing a different weight. A heavier weight is going to be a bit, bit bulkier in that twist and in the sleeve. The sleeve, um, I'm looking at one or two trumpets where Asma's uh, had this just yeah. serpentine uh, hem on the bottom. Um, yeah, yeah, so that, gives, that mm. gives the body a little bit more fullness. This, it does, this doesn't it? This heavier fabric yeah. gives the bo can body more shape. So if you wanted that in your figure, then you could choose this heavier um, cloth. So that that's one of the bonuses. Um, and as I said, we had poor mm. Catherine who put the sleeve around the wrong way, which is completely... Oh, that's uh, hard. What a heartbreak. They uh, probably had a notch, you know, for a, a notch yeah. and for the, the, the seam, but you have two seams. You have a shoulder seam and then an underarm seam. So yeah. if you're in a hurry, you're going to take that and you're going to just put it on that notch on a seam and it's upside down. Um, is, do you think this top works better with a smaller print if you were going to make this? So if some of our viewers now are going to go out and find a cutout um, a twist top, uh, does it matter about print size? Or do you just say, do you know what? I love this fabric. I'm going to use it. doesn't matter if it's yes, big I or bold. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we have that the, the green and orange one. Uh, the green and orange fabric it does uh, yes put that a was vicky graphic. yeah yeah vicky's it does put a different graphic on i think for for me the more successful tops are the smaller print yes which then yes. shows off the execution of that twist you know um looking at asthmas from a distance you the print takes over as does the as does vicky's yeah. But I'm looking in the lineup now and I'm I'm thinking that even the one on the end, Jilly's, and then the, the sparkly one, Matthew. Yeah. Those are the ones for me that show the, the you know, the execution of the, the style lines. Oh wonderful. Well let's then move on yeah. then to the transformation challenge. Which was to, to we we love the transformation <laughs> challenge. Uh, it does create some good conversation. Uh, was to create from a blouse and a uh, or a blouse and a shirt because they gave them more and a skirt to or a corporate uniform uh, into a garment that expresses your personality. And look <laughs> at those twelve there. <laughs> <laughs> 
they're some delights. <laughs> they're all so different. I think the judges liked the more that you put into the transformation, that the higher the score you you tended to get. Um, so we had um, we we had the bondage shirt, which was delightful. Really loved it. I'm glad that got the top marks. Oh yes. And uh, Asma had put a lot of thought into hers. I thought um, uh, Jilly's was very good. Jilly's with the uh, with the, um, the the skirt over the print, and she had slashed through the skirt. Yeah, this one here. Uh, yeah. Yes, I thought that was really, really well done. And I, yeah, I, I, think, I think I said to you, if I was going to do it, if 90 minutes is not long, do you know, I don't know what I would do, but I think I would slash, cut and rip. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so she used the time really well and came up with something which was really, it, it was unique yeah. to uh, what everyone else had done. I, I think she deserved a, a higher score than what, than what she ended up with. But um, I was thinking I would have taken as many different colors of fabric as I could find. And I would have cut 16 panels and I would have made a full circular skirt. Oh, and wow. Made a really cool belt over it, but just <laughs> something, turn the mannequin fast, it would just take flight. And, um, <laughs> and take... dance. Oh, look there's... at that. So that, that one was fantastic. Matthew's. So that that was such such imagination behind that so, absolutely well, that's a transformation and a half and totally. and i was saying i was saying to ting on uh, earlier um on unpicked as another show where we uh sit and talk through just we analyze yeah. and talk through um and ting didn't like this uh, uh but i said but it looks like in the nicest way that's 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 ninety minutes worth of work. I can see the the thought processes. I've got a bit of a shirt. I'm going to rip that there. I'm going to stick that there. And I loved that. I love the combination of red and black, and I love the gingham ruffle on the sleeve and on the shoulder. I thought yeah. that might have been a man's tie. You know, a necktie oh. for the corp. But it's. I don't think it is. But I thought, how clever. Well. It would be even clever if it was. Let's let's yeah. leave it <laughs> that it was. Uh, but yes, it, when you when you look at those, um, I just think, yeah, one, wonderful. And and I know sometimes the transformation challenge, uh, it it doesn't always work. And 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 a bit with this, you had on the original shot. I think it was a plain blouse and a plain skirt. Yet they then gave them loads of beautiful coloured shirts to choose from. So. It, you know, in certain yeah. places, some people might argue that. But um, 90 minutes, people, let's remember that. <laughs> so it's That's a good point. Impressive. That is a good point. Yeah. And some of them, you know, the choice of colors is just not, it's not vibrant enough. It's it's not entertaining enough. And then you end up with like the pink shirt, which, you know, doesn't really look like it was transformed from anything, does it? Um um, so it can. No. Yes. I think your choice of fabric is important, and then you have to have an idea. Where you you have to think that you have to completely. You have to make something which is completely different from the two uh, items that you start with. Yeah. So you're talk. You have to think of a third, completely different idea, and work out a way to get there as fast as possible. Because yeah. ninety minutes is it's... no time at all. I, I think we've talked about this before. The transformation round is quite a different skill uh, from a pattern round. Mm -hmm. It's almost a, a different person and a different sewing technique entirely, isn't it? Some people mm -hmm. follow patterns and that's what they like doing. Uh, I don't know how I would be in a creative challenge like that. It's almost chalk and cheese, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I think you, you have to... These sewers, they have to prepare for that. They know that they're going to have to, every week, they're, if they stay in the process, they're going to have to do that. So they have to think about um, this in advance. I think you have to be prepared for that. And maybe go through a set of steps with yourself and say, well, I really do like making this sort of thing. I'm good at this sort of thing. So when I'm given a transformation challenge, I'm going to put that technique in place mm. 
because it'll show off that skill and I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about how I'm going to get from here to, I'm going to use this technique. Yeah. So it might be you like, you're very good at, you know, gathering things, or you're very good at pleating, or you're very good yeah. at ruffles, or you're very good with color. So Brilliant you idea. So to... go into that round knowing I'm going to use pleats no matter what. Yeah. You could do that yeah. and just use the best yeah. skills that you have yeah. and your best instincts on it. And then, you know, give yourself a head start because it's very complicated. I think I remember when they got the, they gave everyone a parachute. Oh, know. yeah. Yeah. You remember that? So what, what the heck? It's a mile of cloth. <laughs> you know, what do you do with a mile of cloth? So, you know, that's just. Uh, well, you're going to love yeah, it so next that... week because because I think they've got um, uh, wind breaks next week. But before we finish, let's go into the made to measure. Uh, the made to measure, they had yeah. to. Uh, where are we? They had to uh, cut out. Uh, it's a cutout dress. Have you worn many cutout dresses in your time? Not, not many, but I have seen them. And I, when I was in Paris last weekend, I went into Bon Marché and I saw loads of cutout dresses. So, oh, and there was yes, and there was one. Uh, there was a Stella McCartney dress, which the waistline was cut out of half of the dress. And you think, well, how, how would that stay up? Oh. But it was very tight. It was tight at the waist. So the fact that it was split, like from the side front all the way around to the side back, and then there was a, a zip in the side that was connected, it did work. And I saw it oh. on a mannequin, and it. I thought, wow. So it is. The sewing bee is very in tune with what is popular. Well, here we have Lizzie. I like this myself because uh, I like a bit of Dior. So this Dior inspired cutout. Um, that's the front there. What should you think of this one? I love this dress. I thought this was a real success. And I thought it was it, the ease of having two, uh, the bodice left and the bodice right, go through this ring and then yeah. tie in the back. Almost gave you another cutout at the neck. Yeah. So, Good spot. So that yeah. was, that created another, um, you know, another shape that was cut out and i thought it was modeled beautifully it was, yeah and uh, i love the choice of fabric it looked like roses far away but then when you got up close they were faces you know um it's wonderfully done beautifully executed i it was one of my favorites yeah. Uh, another one of my favourites, I know we've talked about already, and I'm sure we're going to be talking about her probably up to the final, unless she has a really bad week. Uh, asthma again. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Well, I, Just... I, I, I can't capture it in that shot. You need the model to be further away because the drape on that as it went down to the legs was stunning. Yes. I, it, it, to me, when I saw it on the, on the, the catwalk, on the runway... It looked like it, it just had this marvellous texture. I was yeah. surprised to see it was polka dot. Very surprised because it, it didn't, didn't show on the catwalk. And again, um, this is something that happens with commercial patterns. They are usually tall in the back. They're always oh. tall in the back. So um, you can measure your client you know, to the millimeter. But if you're using a commercial pattern, you have to be careful because many women have a, a sway back. Okay. Now tell and, me uh, about um, the, the main thing that was going to come out of this round of a cutout dress was this term gaping, uh, mm -hmm. which I presume the gaping is other bits of the body or the fabric gaping because there's too much of it or, or ha because it's, if yes. you cut out some fabric i don't understand how it's going to keep its shape anyway and not gape in my simple head yes well it's it's possible but it's almost like in every one of these dresses that had a cut out in the back you could pinch two two triangles at the waist and that's simply yeah. because there's too much there's too, it's too much length as we were saying, commercial patterns which they're using, ah. they're normally always, always too tall in the back. So you have to, I mean, they could have got around that by just sewing a couple of wedges. Yeah. Um, it, 
you might think it doesn't look very nice, but it looks a lot better than having it gape. Yeah. So you have to put a dart in each side of the, you know, the left and the right there. You can see this is a very good photograph at the back because it's equal gaping on both sides. And if you just yeah. pinch that, then it would fit. Okay, uh, wonderful. And let's have a look at, uh, where is he? Um, Matthew. No, Tony. <laughs> get, get my names muddled up now. Is there, there we do we have two? We, we have do. Tony. We have Tony W and we have Tony R. Though I, I get the yeah. impression uh, Tony is going to be Tony and they're going to call Tony R, Tony R all the time. So this <laughs> technically this is just Tony uh, uh, rather than Tony R. But um, this one was Jersey, which you could argue is a good idea, clever idea to use less it's harder to work with but less worry about fit or is that a myth well it depends if it if it was if he cut it too large it wouldn't matter that it was jersey it would be too big it wouldn't fit i think there was a comment that he let he he let the jersey stretch just enough yeah whereby it helped fit it helped to cling on to the figure um so he cut it maybe on the tighter side and then that really um hung on to the body um this one again it was beautiful beautiful choice of fabric the pattern and the fabric wonderfully married yeah. up and of course the model just she carried it beautifully um it is a simple pattern but it was made um, you know, more, but because of that lovely print and, and then the drawstrings, oh, you know, which added just... another texture. Yeah. 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 Bravo to Tony. This, I'm glad this, this made garment of the week. Which it did, um, uh, which I was just about to say, uh, yes. Yeah. How, are you uh, happy with that? Do you thought, yes. Well, there, there seemed to be a couple that could have got garment of the week. Um, but um, that one, very worthy. Yes. I think Asma's dress and um, what was the one, the, the Dior dress? The Dior. Uh, I, uh, Li so, Lizzie. Yeah. Yes. So Lizzie, Asma, they, I think they were also contenders. Yeah, absolutely. Very close. Yeah. It's only because Tony's fit perfectly. Yeah. With the other and, two, I think. Would, yeah. And that's what Made to Measure is about, isn't it? Because you've got the measurements and that's the skill. And I think sometimes that gets lost, doesn't it, in, in the creation of a wonderful thing that you can have something very simple, you get the fit right and it looks stunning. And sometimes the fit is often lost, isn't it? it that's right. That's right. And if you were to, you know, if you were to try to deduct points for things, you might say, well, maybe asthma sleeves are a little bit too short. Is does yes. made to measure have to, you know, do, are there other rules that that sleeve has to go down to the wrist? Uh, did she mean to have it three quarters? So, you, you, you know, but I think the reason Tony won is exactly what you said. It fit perfectly. Yeah. Um, and it's and a made to measure. Oh, yeah. Made to measure for sure. Uh, but sadly, we had to say goodbye to someone each time. Sometimes I think this show needs, you should have one week where you don't lose anyone. Just have all the sewers in sewing and then have the mm. second week losing one. And I wouldn't mind if you only had then 11 sewers in, if it was, you still need to get it into 10 weeks. Uh, it just seems brutal, doesn't it? On the first episode, if I was a sewer and I've been there for one day and I'm, I'm going home straight away, uh, I was like, oh. Maybe they might get more people if if uh, audition <laughs> if you knew you weren't going to go out on week one. But yes, we had to lose Catherine. Yeah, I don't like it. I I don't yeah. like the fact of elimination in week one. And I think they should have a team. I think they should have two teams or four teams for that first episode, and the team should win. Oh, Something like that. What a great idea! Yeah. Yeah. Get everyone. It takes used the pressure to off, then, doesn't it? Of course yeah. it does. No, I don't like. I'm against it. But um, we had to lose her, and understandably, the, the problems she had with her made to measure run out of time, and she had the team helper, um, and then the sleeve on wrong for the um, the, the pattern challenge. But um, there we are. That's the that's the way the program goes. Um, the so goes. we've gone yeah. from 
11, uh, 12 down to 11. Next week is, is travel week, uh, Carol. So I wonder what we'll be looking at there. Travel week. Uh, I think they've got to do something out of a windbreak and some rucksacks. That's right. And something for the beach. Is something for the beach next week? I think as so. Well. Yeah. So I wonder yeah. what wonder what skills we'll be looking at. Uh, we don't yeah. know until we've watched it or importantly till Carol's watched it. She'll then come up with a technique. So I hope you've enjoyed it. As I say, if you're new to All Gathered Up, let us know in the comments. I know Carol, there are many many people who have watched over the years who are very excited because when I put the trailer video up, did you see the trailer video up of our, I, our show? I've, you go into the yeah. comments and then people have said, oh yeah, I can't wait to watch you all gathered up and unpicked. It's like a trilogy of the bee. It makes the bee 10 weeks wonderful. <laughs> How lovely well, is it's, that? It's wonderful. And I love, I love the comments and I hope we get many and, uh, and then we can, it helps us tailor the show. And, uh, but most of all, Stuart, it's, it's thanks to your, your, your good self for putting this all together and you keeping up with the technology and, and, uh, and it's, it's just lovely to talk to you every week. I promise. Oh, I, I love our 10 weeks. Can't wait. And as I said, it, actually, technology, it's worked today, hasn't it? We've had no blips or anything. So we yeah. might even, come week four or five, we might even do a live live. Yes, where you can then chat in the YouTube comments and we could even go off piste and take a question and Carol could do something at the sewing machine live live. Does that excite you or does that give you the collie wobbles? <laughs> well, no, not at all. Not at all, because I, I, it, it works with the, when the red light is on. We've seen that. So let's keep Abs it going. And if, if somebody can manage the comments, Absolutely. I think we need somebody to you know, if we can get somebody to manage the comments and apps, yeah, of course, let's go for it. I know someone who can do that. Though the only thing is she's <laughs> in America, so it depends on time difference. But I've got someone oh. lined up. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week for All Gathered Up, episode two of uh, the the uh, the Great British Sewing Bee. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.